recording. It should be on right now. So we'll get started. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Uh, welcome to the Jenkins Google Summer of Code 2023 Mentor Roundup webinar. Um, today's January 19th. So um, we are doing this in Zoom, of course, and uh, for any questions, please put them into the uh, chat window. And um, if there's any questions that comes up after the session, just feel free to pop them into the Gitter channel and or the Discourse channel where we will um, be lurking around for questions as well. And then as usual, the code of conduct applies here as always. So be nice. Be respectful, please. I think this one is yours, Jean Marc. Yes, thank you, Alyssa. Thank you for the uh, the introduction. And as said, I love the elephant protecting the the little one. Uh, here today, uh, we are going to address questions and clarify a few uh, things about mentoring in Google Summer of Code, especially in this uh, 2023 edition. So we're uh, first going to discuss uh, who we are, what it means to be a mentor, uh, what is the calendar coming uh, up for this year, how do you participate in the various phases or periods in the program. Uh, I clarify a couple of things uh, or give some advice on how it's going to work. And we're com we complete uh, with an open question and answer, and you can ask whatever related to Google Summer of Code, uh, whatever you want uh, to know or clar clarify. I can answer other questions, but that will be offline. So first, Google Summer of Code. Uh, just, I, I guess that people listening to this uh, recording or attending to this meeting know what Google Summer of Code uh, is. Uh, you can refer to uh, the Google site to have the full details on uh, key elements in there are project ideas, mentors, and contributors that I will also name as students, the people participating. So contributors or students are working on projects with the help of mentors. This session, we will uh, clarify what mentoring uh, is. So first, thank you for stepping forward uh, to mentor, because if you, you're interested in this presentation, that means that you, you want and intend to uh, mentor. This is a very important step, and we we appreciate very much uh, the effort uh, that you're doing in, in, in there. So what does it mean to be a mentor? Uh, and you probably know it if you're interested by mentoring. It's a great human experience. Uh, it's you, a human experience because you're going to help uh, younger people uh, to grow by getting an experience in open source uh, and computing and also a step in their professional career. And this is very gratifying. Uh, it's also a great experience because you will be able to share your passion for, for open source, technical subject, sharing uh, uh, all that. Another interesting thing uh, by being a mentor is, in, and I like to hint that, just remember how you felt when you got out of school, that you started, that you contributed to your first open source uh, project. It's a great accelerating uh, uh, experience. Just remember how you felt and maybe fill the gaps uh, of uh, what was missing at that time, or maybe just reproduce a, a great mentor that you met at that time. It's also a great experience because it allows you to reflect on your practice, how you work, uh, 
what is important to you and by having the mirror of younger people being interested uh, is uh, very interesting. Uh, and then you can also use that to improve your mentor coaching skills, which is also very important uh, in professional life. So it's really very attractive to be a mentor. But I need to be honest here, uh, there's no reward or financial reward beside being proud to have done something useful to participate it to have participated in a great adventure uh, and having the thanks and gratitude from the community at large so there's no money involved there's no retribution even no t-shirt or swag to uh, to have uh, although uh, maybe no. <laughs> it's also an important investment, a time investment. So you need to know that from when you start, you need to count about two to six hours a week to invest uh, uh, in the adventure. I want to say it up front. Uh, it's not answering uh, one or, or a couple of two emails, reviewing a few pull requests. No, it's you're going to build a constant relationship uh, with candidates or with uh, students that will work on, on the project. The heavy lifting is during the summer period for uh, the Western Hemisphere. Uh, so uh, the summer starts um, in June and in August. Uh, I know that seasons are different in other parts of the world, but uh, this is where the highest involvement will be as a mentor uh, to follow your mentee. Uh, goodwill and enthusiasm is important. It's not sufficient. So to be a good mentor, uh, you need to have some experience in development, Jenkins development, plugin uh, development, various other aspects. Uh, of uh, development. You need to have experience also in the open source way, uh, how it works, the process, the tone, the communication. These are important uh, uh, assets or uh, uh, elements to uh, master. Uh, you need to have a presence in the Jenkins community because uh, the, the whole process is embedded in the Jenkins community. We, we're going to encourage the interaction with uh, the Jenkins public uh, and, and elicit interactions. So uh, the better you're known in the, com the community, the, the easier uh, it will go. Uh, being a maintainer or an active contributor uh, will is, is in certain case critical uh, especially if we want to update or the project idea is about updating an existing uh, component and adding new features. Uh, so the people mentoring must be able to approve a pull request and merge it. Otherwise, the complete process will be sluggish and will it will not work. We don't, we will not have the, the uh, the expected uh, fluidity. Um, it's still time to build the experience. If you're coming from another community or you, you, you're still uh, looking, you have experience and, and the most important thing, you have a heart and you want to participate, the enthusiasm for me is, is the most critical uh, uh, um, element that that you need is the the drive to share and and help uh, people uh, you can still build up that experience uh, by uh, um, participating in the community uh, 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 contributing to plugins or or core uh, adopt a plugin and be involved uh, in uh, uh, a particular plugin or uh, component. I, I will explain more details in that uh, afterwards. 
So um, first thing, who's who, uh, who's doing what, and uh, so on. Now we, I don't know how many attendees do we do we have. So let's start first with the the first important actors is um, the Jenkins org admin team. So the org admin team's role is being the interface uh, with uh, Google in the organization of uh, this adventure. Uh, so we're going to um, uh, provide our registration or our candidature, what is the correct name in English? But uh, so, um, uh, Alyssa, help me there. What are we going to submit end of this month? Our oh, application? Uh, our mentoring Appli org app application. application, mentoring org application. Correct application. I was I was searching for the the word. Another important role is that um, we are responsible that the program within Jenkins works smoothly. Uh, and efficiently and that we reach uh, the objectives. And so there's uh, an important uh, uh, work uh, to be done uh, there. And you will discover later what the, the roles are. Member of the org admin teams are Elisa. Elisa is uh, outreach uh, SIG uh, um, uh, officer. And leading the the effort, we have Chris Stern. Um, maybe Chris, if you well, Elisa first, you can present yourself quickly. Yeah, um, hi everybody. Sorry, um, where, where you are? Um, I'm located in California. Um, so I've been with the Jenkins Project for since 2011, and before that, I was I worked on Hudson, but um, been around Jenkins for a long time. This is my second year. Uh, being an org admin for Jenkins, for Jen uh, Jenkins in GSOC, excuse me. But so I'm happy to be part of this team. Great. Chris. Yep. So hi, everyone. My name is Chris. I'm based in Hong Kong. Uh, this is also my second year as an org admin. And I, I have been a mentor once previously uh, in 2022. And uh, I'm looking forward to being possibly both a mentor and um Ogamine again but uh, it depends uh and i work as um an, a software engineer full time uh but i volunteer for jenkins so happy to meet you here great thank you for participating bruno who are you hi uh in france as you may guess with my accent uh oh i'm not very far from you jean-marc as you know it's 200 kilometers or so um, I've been playing with Jenkins yet playing, not really, really working uh, since last April, and it's my first time as an org admin, of course, and also as a mentor, potential mentor. We'll see which uh, subjects will make it to the end. So anyhow, pretty happy to be there and um, very happy to welcome all of you on this program. Great. Thank you, Bruno. So and uh, my name is Jean-Marc Mason. Uh, I'm located in Brussels. Uh, I'm from an older generation, meaning that I've already seen a lot of things. I'm still very enthusiastic about uh, technologies and sharing these incredible things that happen and uh, that are available uh, out there. This is my second year as uh, Organmin with the, 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 the team here together. Um, and and this is basically it. So uh, this is the the team. A, a lot of decisions and arbitrations uh, are done together by this team. So uh, there are different levels of arbitration. The mentor team is a first uh, level. Uh, org admins uh, is another uh, stage where we make decision and also to solve potential problems. How can you reach to org admin, the org admin team as a whole or individual? Uh, use the Gitter channel. You can also use uh, the discourse uh, community.jenkins.io uh, channel uh, for that. 
We also have an email group. Uh, it's described on uh, the GSOC page on Jenkins.io. It's an email group. This is how you can reach all the org admins should you have uh, an issue, a communication issue or, or whatever, and you want to raise uh, the attention of the org admin team as a group because you feel something is uh, is going wrong. It is always can be interesting in some cases, especially related to communication breakdown uh, issues. So it is about the, the org admin team. Uh, so um, this, now let's start going around with the other uh, mentor candidates that are, that are here on the call. So uh, here are uh, just a few hints of what are the subjects uh, I, want, I want to do. So the first I see in the list is uh, Freyam. Sorry Everyone, to butcher yeah. your first name. So how it is, is your right. first name? It is actually oh. right. It's Freyam. It's simple as that. Freyam. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Right, everyone. So, um, yeah. Um, hi, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Sam, and I'm located in India as of now. Uh, I'm currently a student. Um, I think I'm gonna be graduating next year. So yeah, I'm still pretty young. Out. I mean, I guess I'm the youngest one here, and uh, I'm actually interested in multiple projects this year. Um, oh yeah, just one more thing. Uh, this is actually the first year I'm actually like interacting with the J Jenkins community as a whole. I have been lurking around for the last four or five months. You know, I've been part of the discourse. I've been part of the Twitter chat as well. But I think this is the first time I'm, I'm actually like very like uh, proactive about the entire the contribution and mentorship and all of that. Uh, talking about my prior experience in open source, I actually love open source. I have been doing open source for the last eight years now. I still remember my first ever, like, you know, PPR. It was not, it, was, it wasn't much, but still, like, you know, I actually learned a lot. It, I think it had like, almost 74, like, conversations. Just, we just kept talking back and forth. It was amazing, but, like, I mean, I feel that open source is the best way to like learn something new or to actually like get like you know like to actually get to actually get involved in something very big and something influential. So uh, yeah, uh, I guess like why I mean oh yeah also talk, talking about the projects I'm interested in. Uh, I'm actually very specifically interested uh, in the plugin installation one because I because like it's something I have been using myself a lot, and I feel that you know like there are some things that you know we can work upon and. Uh, if I actually may share my screen, uh, may I share my screen? I would like to show you something. Uh, oh, wait, I think the host has disabled the screen share. Yeah, uh, here for- Oh, it's fine, site. it's fine. Uh, I'll just, I'll just share, share, share a link. I think the link should work. Sh share, everyone... share the link, please. Otherwise we're Perfect. going to lose the, the, the rhythm, but uh, go it ahead. Makes sense. I, yeah, I actually have shared the link. So yeah, uh, as actually mentioned in the project chat pack over here, uh, there are like a, couple of new features and a couple of more enhancement features, which are really interesting. And I would really, really love for these features to come to life. And I, and I feel that like I have the necessary experience, the necessary expertise, you know, to actually get this working up from the ground. So finally, what motivates me to become a mentor this time is that uh, I actually have been a mentor prior. I, last year I entered uh, at Joomla. So Joomla is a CMS, uh, like, you know, it's just like a WordPress, but like a much older version of it, if, if that's a way you can see it. Uh, see it. But yeah, so uh, I actually had lots of lots of fun uh, last year working at them. I mean, I was just like, uh, I, I was like the secondary mentor in almost every project out there. I think there were around like four to five projects at the same time. And I was actually part of all of them at the same time. So it was kind of like a very mixed experience. I, I, I was interacting with everyone. I was actually conducting events, you know, just like many events, just like we used to have this online gaming sessions. We used to have like outreach sessions. We used to conduct blogs, vlogs, and like this lots of fun. And I would actually like to bring that here as well. Uh, if I'm actually selected as an mentor this time, and more than that, uh, I want to be able to learn new stuff. Uh, I feel that like, like you, I, I, I feel that everyone learns a lot while just, you know, while like showing that same path to somebody else as well. So I would actually like to learn as, a, I mean, as well as a mentor or as a student or as whatever you can, whatever my role here is. But yeah, um, 
in short i'm just here for fun i mean this is just something i really love doing and i wouldn't mind you know like just being and like, making a difference out there yeah hey freem that was a brilliant presentation and i hear the the enthusiasm uh, in really great okay let's move on and uh, we have uh, some mentor uh, candidates I won't say, I will not say an, an old timer, but uh, an experienced mentor. So Mark, yeah. you're the next one. Can you present yourself? Sure. I'm, I'm Mark Waite. Uh, I've mentored uh, two or three years and it was a really positive experience. I have to agree with John Mark's observation, plan on four to eight hours a week, every week throughout the mentoring period, it's work. This is, this is non-trivial. It's a real contribution and you're really helping someone, but it's work. So if, if you say, oh, I just can't do that, that's also okay. We understand. So let's see, who am I? I maintain the Jenkins Git plugin. I maintain the J Jenkins Git client plugin. I'm a member of the Jenkins governance board and I'm a Jenkins core, core maintainer. And therefore I've got a lot of permissions. Uh, I'm actually not as experienced in Java as I'd like to be. And I'm certainly not not as experienced in other languages I'd like to be, but I'm happy to use the skills I have to try to help others, right? And, and I've enjoyed learning, enjoyed growing, and enjoyed deeply some of the surprises that came to us in past Google Summer of Code experiences where we specified a project, the student created a great project description, and during the execution of the project, we realized we had not understood some very important parts and had to, had to make changes and corrections and adaptations. It's a learning process, not just for the, the person who writes the project plan and is the first time contributor, but also for us as mentors. John Mark, did that cover the topics okay. you wanted or was there more that I should say? Yes, no, and, and... Uh, thank you for sharing your practical experience and, and putting into the light the time investment that is required and it's better to know it beforehand if you want to do a good job uh, and, and act responsibility uh, responsible uh, with the people. And also, uh, like an old general said, you, the plan holds until you start. <laughs> the the battle so you need to be prepared and this is what's what makes the adventure yeah really. now i i missed i missed one answer sorry i owe an answer where are you located i'm located in colorado in the united states therefore i'm in the mountain time zone therefore and i i talk like i come from utah because i do <laughs> therefore if my accent bothers you or my mispronunciation of words bothers you don't let it get get past you that's just where i'm from i'm working to overcome it Great. Thank you very much for sharing that, Mark. So the next one on my screen here is uh, Kevin. Kevin also uh, is uh, interested in uh, in mentoring a project, has some experience uh, in that field. Kevin, who are you uh, what, and, and so on? Go on. Yeah. Um, so I'm Kevin Martins. I uh, just started working in Jenkins last year around the same time as Bruno. Um, and uh, I'm based out of Massachusetts, so East Coast time, EST. Um, but uh, I want to be a mentor because uh, I'm also the documentation officer and have uh, been part of the copy editor team for Jenkins.io for a few months now. Uh, I've seen the results and the impact that Google Summer of Code has had, not only on Jenkins, but the people involved with it, and just how much um, everyone gets out of Google Summer of Code really has uh, kind of made my heart swell up a little bit. And I just want to be able to give back. I've learned so much in the last almost year uh, that I I just can't sit here knowing I know all this stuff and not share it with other people or help other people learn. Um, the excitement, the enthusiasm that people bring to this project is really uh, infectious. And I uh, have seen, uh, looking at the project proposals, there's a couple that really caught my eye, like the uh, site generation and doc screenshot automation. So there are uh -huh. things that I'm really, you know, interested in myself on a personal level and professional and um, work, you know. Um, so really, I want to be able to become a mentor, 
help people learn what I've been able to learn and get these and like gain knowledge from the people that I'd be working with because um, I think one of my favorite things about Jenkins and the open source community is just how different everyone is and the skill sets each person has. Um, I might know documentation, but I don't necessarily know development. And if I can increase my Java skills like Mark wants to, I mean, that's amazing. And that's a, that's a huge benefit for me um, in every way. And, and, you know, I get to share my, like I said, my experience, my knowledge, anything that I can um, as a mentor. And I've done a lot of training in um, education uh, projects before in my past lives. So uh, we want to continue that and just you know flex those skills a little bit more here as well. Right, that was a brilliant presentation, Kevin. So very nice in, in your perspective uh, on the usage of things is critical for these mm -hmm. projects. Okay, good. Then I see uh, somebody I remember. I recognize the curtain behind. So Diraj, you're on. Who are you, where are you located, and the rest of the presentation? Uh, yeah, can you can you hear me? Uh, it was Hello? more Diraj, Diraj Singh. Yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah, hi. Uh, so my name is Rajiv Singh. Uh, I'm from India. Uh, so located Indian time zone. Uh, would, you, would, you, would, you, so, would you stop stop for yeah, a minute? Yeah. Uh, we meant Diraj. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, well, so here, is, let's let's do it that way. Rajiv, go ahead. Yeah, okay. So my name is Rajiv. Uh, like I'm from India, so I'm located in Indian time zone. I graduated last year and uh, I'm working as a software developer. Uh, so I'm an open source enthusiast. So in 2020, I did Google Seasonal Docs with GRPC. Then I did uh, LFX mentorship with Moza Global. And I did last year, I did Google Summer of Code with KPDN. Uh, captain uh, with uh, Oleg and Meg. So I saw like even, so I got to know about Jenkins from them. So, so, so basically I'm interested in that building Jenkins IO uh, with alternative tools, that idea. Uh, the reason is that uh, last year when I did Google Summer, Summer of Code with uh, Captain, uh, my project was making a new dock engine. So I already have experience with making a dock engine. And the thing is that even in uh, 2020, uh, when I did my Google season of docs, so the partial sum work was on uh, making a, um, a doc site using Jekyll. So uh, for uh, if you talk about, I don't have much experience at writing a doc, but uh, more of like technical knowledge, how to make a robust doc engine. And I saw like, uh, even I went through that idea uh, for a doc engine, like Antora, and uh, so it was suggested like uh, we'll be using Antora. Uh, last year when I did my Google Summer Code, we used Docosaurus and even that time also we thought of like uh, uh, making it uh, a large scale like using um, like CD uh, cloud native uh, organizations uh, like what Oleg said that time. So uh, maybe that also we can consider it. L let's see. So the so I'm, I want to mentor because like I already have experience um, as a student. So I want to give it back. Um, I have mentored people, uh, not on a large level, but uh, like, uh, so in India, we have some open source program on college levels. So on that, uh, I used to mentor, like I used to review stuff, uh, or, or I used to be like a, a partial, not like a serious mentor, but like a well, full-time, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, I have experience as a, an open source and all. Uh, Jenkins, um, like we used to, uh, we used to like in our company, Jenkins CI, uh, but no, uh, I don't have much uh, uh, no, like Java level. Uh, yeah, I'm a Golang guy, so I don't have much Java IA. But that that's okay. That okay. I mean, doc engine is like something I don't think uh, we need more of. Like, but yeah. So that's about me. Okay, great. And so you're working. So you're not uh, uh, studying anymore. No, no, I'm working. Yeah. Okay, good. Because I know that uh, the semesters. Uh, in India, work differently than in the Western uh, Hemisphere. So yeah, the, yeah. The, the holidays are a different period. Hey, great! So thank you very much for that presentation, Rajiv. I hope I yeah, pronounced the first name. Please teach me how to pronounce uh, your names uh, correctly. Yeah, so, just like you. Rajiv. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. And I believe this is the the last mentor. Uh, that's on this call. We have Diraj. Diraj, uh, well, yeah, yeah. 
I, I can't pronounce the full name, so I'll say it my way. Diraj Singh Yoda. Is that correct? No. <laughs> close. That was close. No, that was yes. close. But thank you Go for ahead, saying. Diraj. <laughs> I need to come to India to learn. <laughs> yes, always welcome. So, hi everyone. My name is Tirat Singh Jodha, and uh, I'm I've been contributing to Jenkins uh, for two years now. And uh, okay, second is uh, I'm located in New Mumbai, India, and uh, so we have one time zone, so it's Indian Standard Time Zone. So that's a good thing. And uh, I'm interested in mentoring for the project uh, Plugin Health Scoring uh, because I was a contributor with, to the same project last year as part of the same GSOC program. So we started something and it's going really great. So I would like to give back to the program and uh, mentor this year for that. And uh, uh, about my experience, I am currently working with Red Hat and um, I was interning previously, and then now I'm working as a full-time and um, just working on the automation side. So that's going great. And uh, my motivation to become a GSOC mentor is, as I said, since I was a mentee uh, last year who worked on the same project, I would like to give back the knowledge that I've gained while contributing to this and help someone else uh, when they are contributing to the same project. And second thing is that for the past few months, I was not able to contribute at all or even join some meetings uh, related to Jenkins because my work has been very crazy. So this uh, being a mentor at GSOC would be a really great excuse for me to commit something and then start contributing. And having said that, I would not take it uh, lightly. I will stick stick to the hours that we have so that we have decided for the mentors. And I was also would love to go above and beyond and try to help the mentee. So. So this is just also an excuse for me to resume contributing to the project. Um, and other than that, yep, it's always nice. Um, I think it's always nice to contribute to the Jenkins community. So that's all about me. Great. Well, good to see you coming back and, and giving back. Great. So you were you had a good experience last year participating to the program. Very nice. Yeah. Nice to have you on board. Okay, let's move on. So first question, did everybody have a chance to present himself or did I miss somebody? I think we had everybody. Yeah, so, I think we got everybody. I needed a reminder, John Mark, for my for my poor memory. Freyam was interested in a particular project. Rajiv's, I remember, he's interested in doc site in the site generator project and Diraj is interested in plug-in health score. Freyam, I've forgotten yours. What was yours? Um, it, it, it was actually the plugin installation one. Oh, good. Yeah. Plugin installation manager the, tool. Okay. Yes. Thank it's, you. I yeah. think the Mark, I think you are the one who's heading it, right? Yeah. Uh, right. Uh, just yeah. that helps me align. Thank you very much. I need to be okay. sure I remember where the interest is. At least for me, it helps knowing, oh, interested here. Good. Perfect. Okay. Right. Good. Here, let's move on. Thank you for the presentation. It's great to, to see you. Sorry for the people that are listening to the recording, uh, but they can still present themselves uh, uh, online. Okay, so uh, the GSOC timeline, it's more uh, a reminder what are the big steps uh, that we'll have in front of us. So, um, I will, you, you can read, so uh, there's just uh, placeholders. So the big event that will happen end of the month is that uh, Alyssa will take her nicest pen and submit the application uh, for uh, Google Summer of Code end of this month. Uh, and uh, we need as org admin team to have everything prepared uh, that it is uh, accepted. As soon as we know uh, that our organization is accepted, we will then start uh, the preparation work. So that means that candidates will start to prepare their proposals. So this is beginning of February uh, to March, to the, the this end of March. Um, this is an important part where uh, candidates will need 
uh, help to understand correctly the project idea will have uh, will require guidance to build a good proposal and to help them think correctly uh, on their proposal. It's important that we over communicate. Uh, and we'll come back later about that. Students will be shy because it's a very stressing experience for them to step forward and show eventually their weaknesses or their doubts. We need to tell them that this is normal. Everybody is weak somewhere. Uh, and uh, it's part of the process and the richness of what we do to step forward and ask for help. And so try to avoid for their best one-to-one -one channels, especially in this. Two reasons there, it's for them to learn the review process and to accept uh, the, the, the psychological impact uh, of that. But also we share evenly the knowledge and explanation to whoever wants to participate to the program. And this is by fairness. I will remind that uh, several times uh, when, when we get uh, to that. We're also going to organize weekly office hours uh, during uh, that period. We might fine tune uh, the, the timing so that everybody around the world uh, can uh, find his best spot in the sweet spot. Uh, to get organized. The purpose of that office hour is to have a regular time where there will be somebody available to answer their questions, clarify their doubts, and where they can get guidance on the projects or uh, on how to build a good proposal or having a good chance to be uh, uh, selected. So this is a, an important phase where all mentors are expected to be aware, attentive, help, guide the people. This is the first step of mentoring. It's not heavy duty, but it's important in that the candidates feel supported uh, during that period. Then uh, in April, we will have the uh, proposal ranking and, and selection period. I will explain later. Uh, how that uh, works in uh, in detail. This is the moment where we're going to evaluate the proposal, rank them, review the projects and see, do we have a good proposal? Are we able to succeed uh, with these uh, proposals? Uh, mentors are also expected to review this in an uh, asynchronous process so to review, give a note, make comments uh, on, on the proposal, and then we'll have one or two meetings where uh, we'll fine tune uh, these uh, rankings. Um, then students are selected after that pro process. Uh, um, a miracle happens and I'm joking, but uh, Google says, okay, you got four slots, and because you ranked your project that way, the first four projects are accepted and ready to fly. Uh, so the the team gets notified, uh, and the first phase during May is what we call the bonding period. That means where you learn who who you are, how you work, uh, uh, where you set up some. Uh, uh, where you set up the tech stack, uh, how you're going to work, how the communication is going to work, and you start working, refining uh, the project plan and say, well, we're first going to do that and we plan to achieve that at that day. This is the first real life test of the project idea and see are we, are we on a reasonable ground. End of May, beginning of June, this is where the actual coding uh, period starts. Uh, and there the projects uh, roll and fly on their own. Uh, once a week, 
we keep uh, and yeah, we keep that format. Uh, we have a short office hour meeting where all the mentees and mentors can meet at a certain time. If necessary, we'll fine tune uh, the times. But this is just a moment where we listen. What's happening? Are we making progress? Is everything working? Uh, uh, as planned as so. It is very important because uh, for me personally, I don't want anybody to struggle, to feel frustrated, uh, uh, things are not going, where you can also share your victories, not only your, your pains, but share the victories and say, I achieved that, I'm, I'm so happy and proud uh, to have done. This is particularly natural. And Last year's experience showed that these moments where we are together are quite valuable and uh, interesting. It helps me also eventually to fine tune uh, things where uh, uh, communication might be uh, not as uh, as efficient as we, we, we could be. Uh, we have two demos presentation, two milestones. One is midterm, so uh, end of uh, mid-July, let's say uh, there, uh, mid-July, where uh, we organized the first demo. So this is what we achieved. And this will be a public presentation uh, uh, via uh, a Jenkins online meetup, quarter of an hour, uh, where the students present uh, what they've done. Bragging aloud, encouraged. Uh, for some students, this will be a major hurdle uh, because talking in front of a class is one thing. Talking in front of an unknown crowd around the world uh, is another experience and, and you need to help uh, uh, people uh, overcome these. So the communication part uh, is key in the open source uh, process. And we, we, we're there to coach them, teach them, and make them grow uh, in there. And then we'll have the same kind of presentation where we expect a completed product, feature complete, um, uh, at the end, so end August, beginning of uh, September. Uh, where we do the final demos, final presentation, where we wrap up and there will be explanation afterwards what is uh, uh, expected there. GSOC timeline. Are there questions about what has been said up to now? I have 10 minutes to go, so. <laughs> no questions from me. Okay, great, yeah. thank you, Mark. Okay, good. So project selection. This is something I'd like to, to clarify and uh, just to be sure that um, everybody has a common understanding and there is no uh, uh, misunderstanding. It's not because a project has been proposed or that you're... Uh, um, um, not proposing, but you're stepping forward as a mentor, that your project will be accepted. Now, what we can discuss, if you have energy and time, we, we might propose alternatives uh, in there. Uh, but the message I want to get across, there will be a selection on the, process, on the projects, not only on the mentees. So what... Um, what is really important, and I thought a lot about that uh, lately, I'm going to write a document uh, uh, about that, it clarifies before so that there are no false ex expectations or quarrels uh, after that. So for a sturdy GSOC project, we need three legs like this tool. If one leg is, is not correctly fixed or wrong, that will fall. Our responsibility as org admins is that we have a stool where you can sit on, where people can create something, can live with and build something. 
if the foundation is not good, I will be very, very un unhappy. And these rules criteria here will help us uh, to have a sturdy a stool to build on. Maybe needs another image than stool to convey the building. I'll work on that. So the first element, the first leg, is we need a strong proposal by the student. So the kind of things we're going to look and this is during the ranking process. Did a student understand, rephrase the project idea? Does he own, did he internalize the project? Does he come with a novel structured idea? Does he have the necessary technical skills and the guts? You need the heart to successfully bring this project to, to an end. So these are the kind of things we're going to look for. We also need a strong mentor team. This is a responsibility that we take towards the mentees. We need to help them. We need to be in a state where we can make them successful. So we're, we're looking for a team of three mentors because we know people need to take holidays. People can get sick. Um, might have other obligations. So uh, we need enough mentors that are able to work together as a team. Uh, generally, we want to have, no, not generally, we want to have a mentor that is strong, pivot uh, on the project chosen. And so there, there are some uh, important uh, criteria. He knows he needs to be knowledgeable on the project sub, uh, subject matter. I think I'm discussing that later in a presentation. In the presentation, but he needs to be experienced in the domain. One of the indicator is: is he maintainer of the component that will be worked on? Uh, and uh, so. Uh, we'll clarify uh, later what makes a strong mentor team. But as said, uh, uh, you can build your expertise and, and so to be sure uh, that will be selected. Uh, the, the third element, the third leg is we also need a strong project. The project must be feasible, challenging, and useful for the Jenkins uh, community. So we could have a great student, a great mentor team, but the project is, well, maybe completed in two weeks or, or so I'm, I'm exaggerating. So all legs need to be of the same strength, same length. Otherwise the stool doesn't work and you can't sit uh, correctly in it. To explain that, um, when will these criteria be uh, used is when we're going to select the, the projects. So when at a certain, I don't remember the, the, the date exactly, I think it's end April uh, or so, all the, men, the students have submitted their formal proposal. So it, they, they, they upload it on the Google site this is where then the application is closed for them. At that moment, all mentors are requested to read the proposals and to grade them. So and we'll publish what are the criteria that will be used to grade them and comments uh, also uh, uh, will, will be applied. We, we have a spreadsheet uh, that, uh, that's used uh, for for that. The spirit of that grading is, does this student have a chance to succeed? Is it worthwhile to help him uh, build uh, something? So this is an important process. The projects will be ranked based on that, uh, uh, that note. Only one candidate or one uh, mentee per project, so one winner per project idea. And uh, I'll let you read because I'm going to run out of time. 
I'm, I'm sorry for, for that. So the ranking process is important. I want, and we want to have all mentors participating in that. So uh, you're not reviewing proposals on your pet project idea. We're doing it as a community. Uh, based on that, we'll have and we'll discuss it together to fine tune and nuance uh, uh, this. Uh, the mentoring teams for the project are proposed or assembled. We might have no proposal or no good proposal for some projects. And uh, we're going to propose to uh, the uh, mentors that were on that project that didn't pick. Uh, and either they can join another project where they, where they can help or be uh, uh, active on. So there will be some fine tuning of the mentoring uh, teams. Uh, this will be uh, discussed with the mentoring team and org admin, not with the whole uh, mentoring community, but more with the, the project and see, do you see yourself as a team mentoring this particular person? Can we bring that to a successful end uh, in September? Uh, we also going to check the availability uh, of the uh, uh, the mentoring team. The org admin team will make the final decision. So uh, uh, at the end, based on the input, the, the, the process will be uh, public, but uh, at the end, it's a, the org admin team that makes the decision. Now we're we're it, it's not something where we come with a hammer and say, well, this is the way it's going to be. But you probably start to know me. This is not my style at all. I want everybody to feel comfortable and we think together. But at a certain moment, somebody needs to say, well, okay, that's what we're going to do. Otherwise, we're still discussing when I retire and this would be a waste. Um, and we then going, the final phase is then we'll have ranking and the number of slots that we're going to request to Google. And there we're pending the Google decision saying, well, we say that we can manage four projects this year, and these are the, the candidates that we want. And they say with all the organization participating, we can only sponsor three. We'll take the three top uh, of them. This is a process. We're, we're going to clarify this also when we, we're busy with that. I gave a lot of details about that because I had some, some uh, questions uh, about this process uh, and criteria uh, some days ago. And I've been thinking quite a lot and it's worthwhile to describe them and I'll write a document to be reviewed by the, com by the community and say, this is how it's going to work. And I want to do that upfront so that everybody knows what the, 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 the game rules uh, are. Um, are there questions, doubts about what I explained here? Okay, you can always come back uh, via the Gitter channels or discourse uh, channels if you have comments or suggestions for improvement. Last little thing, communication. Communication will is key in open source and is key in this adventure that we're doing uh, together. I already uh, gave uh, a few hints uh, during the presentation. Short reminder, it is very hard for the students to step forward in this crowd. So, you need empathy for them. It's a big effort. They're, they're shy. And the feeling that they have is, who am I to dare step forward? Me, little uh, uh, insect in front of those giants. This is the feeling that they have. We need to help them. We need to... Uh, to um, uh, to uh, welcome 
uh, them uh, the French words coming, sorry. <laughs> but we need to welcome them, help them grow. So this is very important in the communication. Uh, be careful with one-on-one -on -one, uh, communications during public phase. I already mentioned it on the Gitter channel. I receive regularly requests for one-to-one -one, uh, chats on Gitter. Upfront, I refuse them systematically. Uh, it's not because I want to ignore them, because they're not worth it. It's because I want a fair distribution of information to whoever. It's a competition. So there, there. And it's also a key principle of open source. Everything needs to be done in the open, can be reviewed by whoever. If we if we break these this foundation, then suspicion starts to install and you start to have bias and then it goes wrong. Our responsibility, my responsibility as org admin is to look that all that works correctly. Another important rule of thumb that I wanted to share with you is and something I, I try to remember myself is Praise is always given in public. Critique, especially hard critique, is shared in private. Uh, and be careful the way you present the thing. You can hurt people. And this is not the purpose of what we do here. We want to, to, uh, to grow. I have an image that comes in my mind. I'm running out of time, but very shortly, when you have a plant, a small plant that's growing, uh, you need to cut a, a few leaves here and there. So you need to, to put water and make it grow in a certain moment. Ah, okay, you need to go with it. You need to be very delicate in the way you do it. If you do, and especially in some cultures, giving critique publicly, People lose faith of their face. Hope this is correct English, and this hurts. This hurts a lot. So, communication is key in open source. Let's do it also on an important, in a, in a, a good way. I reach the end. Three minutes left for uh, questions and answers. Um, is there something that I can clarify or something I forgot uh, to say? Go ahead. Yeah, I do have a quick question. Like, can a mentor mentor more than one project? Is Very good question. Yeah. Very good question. Um, first, first statement is um, experience has shown that mentoring two project is the best way for failure. Seeing the involvement and the importance, uh, uh, I very strongly uh, discourage mentoring two projects. Okay. So uh, if you have doubts, uh, if you, you're wondering, should I go there, th this project or that project, uh, this is something that will clarify when we will start seeing the proposal. And I will request that students step forward in their preparation process. No, not that we have proposal raining in from who knows where uh, two hours before closing. The, uh, we never heard of them. I have no idea. And generally, they're of very poor uh, quality. And, and so it will clarify, this is something we can discuss, uh, but you will need to have very strong arguments to convince me and the rest of the team uh, for an exception. The only difference is, or, or uh, a comment I can do is uh, um, doing org admin, org admin and mentoring together. My experience uh, is personal experience and in, in my, maybe one day I'll tell the story, is you need to be concentrated on the task uh, and 
you can have um, a focus, especially when you're younger, you can do two things at the same time. In order to do the things well, you need to focus on one or the two things and the other will be minor. So in, in the case, in, in, and I know you would like to, to mentor uh, Chris, and this is perfectly okay to mentor and be org admin. Okay. Now, uh, uh, I know that I will be involved quite a lot in org administration. So uh, normally I will not mentor uh, a project. Uh, um, but this can be discussed if there are not that many projects that make it. Uh, they, so nothing is, is written in stone. But I just give what the, the, the general rules are. In my case, I know org admin is important to me and I want really that this works well. Uh, and I will, I will not have spare cycles to do a good job as a mentor. But uh, yeah. does that answer your question, Chris? Yep. And also, it's like, um, to what extent are we supposed to help the student or the contributor to uh, draft a proposal? Uh, did I understand the question? Went how? How do we need to encourage the people to make their proposal public before? No, no. To what extent? It's like, like, um, they make a draft, and how much are we supposed to help them to like to to add it to the draft? Um. Okay, may I offer a, an answer, John Mark? Yeah, go ahead, because I'm a little bit puzzled. So probably okay, so, go ahead. so the, the past pattern had been that if we don't actively engage with them while they're preparing a draft proposal, they are very, very likely to create a draft proposal that's missing key elements. So yeah. Chris, the, the crucial thing for us, at least for me, has been read every one of the draft proposals and make very blunt comments about gaps and absences and flaws because we ultimately tend to use that proposal as the, the initial project plan and if it's if it's weak those weaknesses will come out later and hurt us i i had several where we made the mistake of not being detailed enough about a particular aspect of a project and we had to then develop that detail later on during during the project itself and it was it was much more awkward than much more painful and much higher risk because we actually didn't we came into the project not knowing the answers so coaching and encouraging in this early com contribution stage is crucial and give strong feedback hey you're missing this section you're missing you haven't thought about this please describe that okay I, I, you you said it much much better than I said. I don't know. I was a little bit off balance, but hundred percent with you, Mark. Hundred percent. John, Mark, I had I did have a question, and it's actually targeted at Freya, at Diraj, and at Rajiv. Um, I think it would help me as a as a candidate mentor if I could have some time to talk with other mentors about the projects they're interested in. Would the three of you be willing to? meet together as a potential mentor team, even, even early on to say, hey, let's do more detailing of this idea together to gather our concepts, et cetera. Right, yeah, it sounds great to me. I, I, okay, yeah, so, so if you're willing to share your email addresses with me I, I, or with, with others. I, I, have, I have the email addresses. Oh, you do, great, okay. So I can share them with you. That, that at least for me would help me focus my thinking process and illuminate some dark patches and, and be sure that, okay, I understand Sounds where good. we're at. Great. Okay. Uh, one thing that probably slipped uh, through in my presentation uh, is that, um, going to stop this here, uh, is that um, the next important milestone that we're going to have uh, is as soon as we know that we're accepted as an org admin uh, and uh, as an organization, uh, we'll organize a kickoff uh, for all everybody on board. 
mentors, mentees, candidates, and whatever. And we're going to explain how we're going to work together in this uh, preparation phase where the people will, will work. And this is the adequate moment where we can organize the meeting uh, where Mark uh, uh, hinted to, uh, where the, the the mentor teams can start to learn each other and know this is going to click, this is going to work. Uh, this is this is where we can uh, we can focus on and and learn a better uh, who we are. That. Okay. So this is an important. Go ahead, Chris. Oh, it's okay. Sounds like a good idea. <laughs> Any other questions? I'm sorry, I'm six minutes late. I won't do it again. Well, generally I talk too much. But we had some great presentation of the, the teams and the people around the table here. I left some time for the last question or comment. So thank you very much all to attend, uh, to uh, have shared your ideas and background and to participate to that. And I'm super happy to start this new adventure with you all together and uh, looking forward to have a lot of fun together. Thank you. Bye-bye, so, everybody. Bye. Bye, -bye. Hey, everyone. Thanks. Thanks.